Um, let's talk a little bit about like what made you decide to get into the regulated market. And, and, and add some new ones too. Like I, I had already been working with some people and you know, some, some nonprofits are still scary and finicky because they get funding. So it's like, oh, we can't be affiliated with a cannabis company and all that kind of stuff, you know, which is, you know, to each his own. Uh, but, you know, and it's like we tapped in with a mask in a bag with the seniors, the seniors, uh, you know, we donate to the seniors so they can get these materials. And they make these materials so that they can sustain uh, and they sell these masks so they can sustain themselves and they feed the homeless with them. So, you know, we can, we can get these away. You got whoever's on there, you DM me, High Purpose Lifestyle. First two people, I'm going to get free masks from the seniors. I got you. Uh whenever you see this <laughs> but um to get in like i said earlier i, I was uh uh you know highly recommended to uh be part of the social equity program in my city you know and so i was like if i'm going to do that then you know i'm gonna go all the way and, and, and i start understanding and learning and you know shout out to mama angie over at the success center who is great, you know, with giving information to social equity applicants, you know, um, and really learn that, you know, I could create a business that I can make some real money uh, to support the people. And like I said, that that's always what's on my mind. That's just who I am now. It's like, uh, you know, when I was growing up, uh, one of my mentors, Jack Jack, or the great Jack Jack from Omega Boys Club, used to say I used to have the hood disease you know, because it's like, for some reason, I just couldn't stay out the streets. I couldn't stay out the hood, you know, uh, once I got bit with the bug and once I like, caught the first cases, I just was, just was always in the streets. But now I got like another type of beautiful blessing to where it's just always community and people first in my mind. So when that, that's all I was thinking, like when they was thinking, when they was talking about this stuff, I was just thinking in my mind, like, how can I use this to help the people, help the community? You know, and I have to be strong and I have to stand on it. I've always been a cannabis activist, you know, per se, you know, not as hard as I am now because it's a little bit more, you know, lenient. Uh, I was in a position being on probation and parole for 28 years that I couldn't be as vocal about certain things. But now I'm not on probation or parole. There's more, you know, uh, uh, more of a platform like these for me to speak out and express myself without being penalized. So that's what's happening. And, you know, we're moving forward. We're pushing hard. So what, I, what I'm really interested in is, um, like Lulu said, it's amazing that you started with being a, a man of the people first and then marijuana, right? Um, right. But what's really interesting to me is how you actually got your business up and running. So other people have been, you know, really focused on the marijuana business, the cannabis business, whether in the underground or learning the legal markets, and then they take those skills and flip them into a business. You're a person of the people that now went to go get a license, but now you had to learn the cannabis business. So can you just talk to me first about like, A, how, how you literally got your license? Like, how, what was the process like? And then B, how did you learn the cannabis business? Um, so the license process, um, is definitely a strenuous one, bro. It's definitely have to be patient. Like I'm sitting here talking to you now, but we started this process four years ago. Let me, I turn up uh, yeah, three, four years ago, uh, start filling out that paperwork and going through all of this stuff, you know, and I have to give credit to my team man. I got an amazing team, Johnny Q, Connor. Joe, the free go watch team, you know, Matt and Marty, um, just phenomenal people who had a lot more patience than I do. You know what I mean? And it was just really just like a, a, a waiting game and staying strong and staying vigilant and having good partners, man. Having good partners as far as that's concerned. You know, um, I, I will be opening up my dispensary this year. You know what I mean? God willing. You know, I mean, COVID has pushed a lot of things back. You know, uh, I was trying to be over for 420, but that's not, didn't happen, obviously. Um, so, yeah, just a lot, a lot of patience, man. And just, you know, the paperwork, going through it, 
getting up early, being on top of it, email after email, communicating with the community, communicating with the right people in the right places. And things are, uh, you know, still rolling, you know. So uh, I'm just hopeful, you know, about just the industry uh, as a whole, you know. And so, yeah, man, that it's been like uh, four years in the making. So, you know, just sticking with it, you know, just going through the paperwork and then learning the business. Um, I've always been kind of like an entrepreneur type of individual, you know, so I got a general sense of business. You know, uh, I took a couple of classes while I was in prison, some business classes and stuff of that nature. So I had a general understanding of it. Um, but like I said, again, man, shout out to the Success Center. Shout out to Ultra Dam. You know what I mean? I learned a lot. Y'all remember them business classes they were talking about? I still got my notes somewhere around here. I got some on this phone too, you know, and just, you know, pushing forward, man. I got a lot of, uh, I got a lot of willpower. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of willpower. I got a lot of gumption. I got a lot of handle my business-ism in me. You know, a lot of the people you talk to who say they are maybe having struggles, man, I promise you they being lazy too as well a little bit. You know what I mean? Because it's like, just handle your business. Like it's, it's, it's regulation, it's red tape, it's bureaucracy. You know, we live in America, you know how it go. If you don't got a lot of money, it's just gonna be a little bit harder. You know, it's not fair, but it is what it is. So you just got to stick to it. You got to handle your business. You got to do what you got to do. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to be bagging up samples of your new sample, violent prevention coming up. You know what I mean? You got to put the stickers on there. You got to, you know what I mean? Make sure all your business stuff is handled. You got to tap in with the pro bono lawyers. You know what I'm saying? You got to push through. You got to really want it, bro. That's, I mean, that's the only thing I can say because it's a lot of barriers, but if an individual like myself can get through and do it, then anybody can. There's no excuse. Rick Ross has his own shit, and he did like 20 some years. He was a kingpin. That's the name of his shit, kingpin. It's a shameless plug. I, you know what I mean? I'm trying to tap in with him, but you know what I'm saying? It's a whole bunch of people, you know, who shouldn't, who should be here, but they think shouldn't be here, who is here and making it happen. So if, you know, like I said before, if I could do it, anybody could do it. You just got to really want it, man. Got to work hard too. Yeah, most def. I, I know that the, like the grit, just the hard work, just the patience, all these things you said mm -hmm. are essential. But one other piece that we all know is essential is straight up cash. It's money, right? It's the capital to get up and running. So uh, was anything interesting about how you guys were able to fund your business or how were you guys able to get enough money to actually get up and running? Um, grinding, man. I, you know, i worked two or three jobs. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm blessed uh, that people want to hear what I have to say from time to time. So, you know, I'm a speaker. Uh, you know, I get paid to speak from time to time. So I just, you know, investing in myself investing in myself and having people who believe in me investing in my vision and what we're trying to do you know michael damien you mentioned mm -hmm. a lot of names that helped you along the way for getting your license mm -hmm. what right. were their role what were their roles you know i think you mentioned pro bono account uh, attorneys what were some of the other types of people that were necessary to, to help you with this license? Um, people who, uh, I was blessed that I teamed up with some people who, who were already trying to um, open dispensaries or was close to it. So they had some knowledge of it already. Um, so you definitely have to have someone that's good with construction and architectural depending on your place and i'm talking about my retail store right now so because my retail store and my brand is two different things you know what i mean um i definitely got to have someone that is familiar with financing and someone that is familiar with uh regulations especially around cannabis and city governance and stuff of that nature you know so uh and and just having someone that you can trust mainly having these people around you that could trust because it gets heavy you know the stuff gets heavy uh there's a lot of quote unquote money in play you know so you got to be able to trust these people got to be able to have somebody on the side i have my team 
you know, when we're together and we have uh, a lawyer together, you know, got to have a lawyer, but I also have my own lawyer on the side to help keep me in check, keep everything is on, you know, this is a lot of reading and it's a lot of uh, big words, you know, that gets tossed around and stuff of that nature, you know, so, you know, having a good finance person, somebody that's good with the regulation and the governance and someone that's good, uh, you know, construction and architecture work, you have to do a, a build out or a rebuild of anything of that nature, you know, and definitely some good community liaisons, which I'm good at, you know, we, we have one that's good, but I mean, you know, when you got an individual like myself who's already uh, deep in the community, that's not that hard, you know, personally for my brand, you know, the marketing and advertising, you know, which I do the majority of myself and, and I have a beautiful team of ambassadors, you know, who assist me, you know, so yeah, that definitely got to have a team and I don't know nobody that can do it all by themselves. I, I don't know nobody. Got to have great cultivators, great distro. Shout out to locals distro, you know what I mean? And gumballs, you know what I mean? So yeah, got to have a great team. And tell us a little bit, you, you mentioned that the retail store is different than your high purpose lifestyle brand. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the brand and the, the strain that you were holding up earlier, Stop the Violence. Oh man, violence prevention actually which is the third installment of my brands. Uh, I'm blessed. I have an eighth uh, jar that's uh, in about like 22 stores right now uh, throughout California, uh, the Bay Area in Southern California. Um, it's chocolate Tina's testing at uh, 28%. It's killing the game. It's a great uh, blend, indica dominant, you know, but it's got good sativa. I'm a, I'm like, and the good guy, but sativa, because, you know, I like to be pumped up. I can be having stuff to do. I like to smoke and still be able to handle my business. You know what I mean? Unless it's like after hours, you know what I mean? Which that's where this violent prevention going to come in at. <laughs> but I uh, also have uh, these pre-rolls right now that's got a beautiful mix of the Chocolatina, uh, Bigfoot, Gelato, and Granimals that's testing at 22% by itself, which is a steal at, at, at stores. And it's selling out everywhere, just killing the game. And then I got uh, this violence prevention that's going to be dropping soon. Uh, you know, um, you know, I don't know nobody else. I don't know. You guys went to some dispensaries. I don't know if you ever seen on the show anybody just, especially a cannabis brand, actively talking about stopping the violence and supporting the community. You know, everybody says it like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to do something for the community, too. But it's like I'm putting it out there. Cannabis, we, we know, is popular right now. Weed is hella popular on all type of level. We see everything that's going on. So we have to infuse in the culture, the give backness of it and just everything like, you know, everything that's going on, man. We have to use cannabis to help push it because it's a peace plant. That's why the Native Americans used to call it the peace pipe. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's like, we gotta have it, violent prevention, which is gonna be a beautiful, a uh, gelato 41 and runs mix that I'm going to be having on shelves very, very soon. I mean, yeah, that's this chocolate, but this chocolatina though, ain't no joke. <laughs> I was saying that's, that's so on brand for you. Um, I know that you do yeah. a, um, buyback program for guns in the community. So I think it's, it's I cool do. that all your products. We've, nine. We've, we've, we've got over 5,000 guns off the street. Shout out to Rudy Corbett, shout out to United Players, all of the people, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Moms, the Man Action, the Paul Blady Foundation, everybody. And, 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 and something that you guys might not know that a lot of people don't know, we try to put out there. The majority of the funds that we use for those buyback programs, $50,000 each time, nine times, the majority of those funds come from the cannabis industry, come from cannabis dispensaries, the Green Door, Mo Green, stuff of that nature. You know, and some of my other partners, Barbie Coast individuals who are giving back, and that's cannabis, giving back to the community. That's cannabis getting guns off the street. That's cannabis supporting violence prevention. You know Yo, that's saying? fire. That's just dope. That's all around dope. I had to let that sit. And uh, it's real. And it's real, yeah, man, too. I'm, 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 
like in all of the, the amazing stuff that you guys do. Um, we have some some questions from the audience. Uh, I know that Lulu shout out, probably still shout got out to the audience. Shout out to the audience, whoever's in there. You know what I'm saying? I just gave away, like I said, DM me, High Purpose Lifestyle on Instagram. The first two people I see on there, I'm going to send you a free mask from the, uh, from the seniors who we sponsor. We donate money. When you buy High Purpose Lifestyle, the proceeds go to things like that. And the things you see we're doing with Us For Us, violence prevention rallies, supporting seniors, community cleanups, all those things of that nature. Bro, you, you, you guys for real, really, not for, not for play, but for real. Yeah. Like you guys really walk the walk. Like it, it all started from all that. It's not like an afterthought. It's not like yeah. I'm going to build my company up to tens of millions of dollars. Then I'll, I'll do a little donation, but like, no, it's like, in after, the after, you, after you look at my big chain and my Rolex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's authentic. After I throw all these big parties that I charge you for, but I'm talking about it for the community out of here um all right i'm gonna i'm gonna hit the the q a here so um i just i just did a huge 420 event for free for the community free for the vendors i didn't charge the vendors to support them you know what i mean i paid for everything shout out the local distro our business partner luke you know what i mean we took care of everything shout out to md farms marie my sister we took care of everything for the people man so they could prosper didn't charge nobody anything i bet that was lit as shit too super lit i got the video coming soon all right we're on the lookout so from the audience i got sandy jackson uh where is this hey, business sandy. located where is this business located and did that make a difference in getting started california baby you know what's up california shout out to the east coast shout out to all my new east coast family new york on down like, i got love for y'all y'all just getting regulated y'all gonna be there though but yeah, we started, I think it did make a difference. I mean, you know, is it prop? Those, all those props, I get the props mixed up, 215, all of that. You know what I mean? Um, you know, made it possible for us to push through. You know, made it possible for us to push through, for us to team up uh, with great distribution, great cultivators, and get some good flour to the people, man, from a good brand. And, you know, a lot of people make great flour, man. Like, you know, I got this right here, shout out Gold Seal and SF. That's a good flour. You know what I mean? But my thing is really like, you know, everybody's making good flour. So then what do you do? Like, okay, everybody's weed is good. Then what's the next level? Good people, man. Got good people, man. People over products, man. Community over coins. You know what I'm saying? It's all about the kind of community, man. Shout out to Lay, you know what I mean? Who coined that phrase for me, one of my amazing brand ambassadors, you know. But a lot of people got good flour. So like you make a decision. If you're gonna get high, get high with a purpose. Back buzz. That's why I call high purpose. In case y'all was wondering why I called it high purpose, I get high with a purpose, man. Don't just get high just to, you know what I mean? Support the community, man. I feel better when I smoke high purpose because I know that every time I exhale, somebody might be getting a blessing. You know what I mean? That's just me, though. You know. <laughs> so I have another question for Yunk. Um, someone asked, let's see. Why should folks pay at legal San Francisco dispensaries where prices are sometimes two to three times more? Um, why should they? For one, like I just said, because every time you exhale, you might be giving somebody a blessing. <laughs> that's if you purchase a high purpose. <coughs> All the other brands, I don't know. That's for you to decide for yourself, you know. And, you know, we keep it real. Where else you going to go? To the block, everybody can't go to the block and get no weed. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't got a weed, man. Everybody don't, you know what I mean? Some people really, really care about themselves and want to know what's going in their weed, man. It's mandatory in the regulated industry that they do test this stuff. They got to test it. You got to know what's in it. You got to know if it's safe. They got to run it through. You know what I mean? That's like asking somebody, why don't you just buy meat off the street? Why are you going to go to the meat market? Why don't I just like, you know what I mean? I got cows in my backyard. Here you go. Cut them up and give them to you. It's cool. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but to, to each his own, man. I don't like nobody. It's enough for everybody. You know what I mean? If you don't want to, don't do it. But don't yuck somebody else's yum because that's what they want to do. 
You know what I mean? And a lot of people want to do it because this store is popping up all the time. I see lines all the time. So, you know, you can go to the street and maybe maybe get some weed. You don't know what you might be getting. You know what I mean? I used to sell, I sell partially hella times to people. I didn't, you know, I'm not happy about it. You know what I mean? I wish I had some weed, didn't have no weed, fake, took people money, all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you know, to each his own. But I suggest, you know, if you want to avoid problems, I know it costs a little bit more, but how much is your life, your peace, your patience worth? You know what I mean? That's like, I struggle with that all the time. Like, I'd be like going, especially in San Francisco, it's rough. Parking is rough. And I'd be going, I'd be like, I'd be seeing the, the parking lot, $25. I'd be like, $25? Man, the park? But I'd be like, if I get my window busted or my car stolen, how much is that going to cost? So, you know, it's up to you, man. And I think also, you know, as a consumer, you, you, you should be empowered to research the brands that you buy from. And right. if you, you know, you buy from high purpose lifestyle, you know that it might be more expensive, but you're supporting community groups and actions that create a safer community um, and are helping <laughs> a lot of other groups. So um, like- And, you, like and you high mean, purpose but, and high purpose in relation to the other brands is not that expensive. You know what I mean? It might be more expensive than buying an eighth on the street, but compared to the other brands that's in dispensaries, it's very affordable. You know what I mean? It's very affordable for your money. You know what I'm saying? I think my pre-rolls is retailing at like $11 in stores. You know what I'm saying? One gram, full flower pre-rolls. You get Bigfoot gelato, granules, and chocolatina. I promise you, you would never complain about none of my products, ever. I'm waiting for a complaint. Been selling out all over the place. God is good. Yo, I don't know if you can see the chat, but uh, they're showing you I love. They, they appreciate you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate all y'all. I'm yeah. back here so y'all can see my whole ambiance and feel me. I can't see the chat, but whatever it is, man, peace and love. DM me, high purpose lifestyle. I'm not hard to find. You know what I mean? I'm right here for the people, man. Any questions, anything I could help with, uh, you know, getting through the industry, anytime I could connect you with somebody, cultivators. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, man. I take my brand ambassadors down to the farms every month. They come to the distro so they can learn. I try to get them to be sell associates, try to get them to get their own brand so that they can flourish and be on their own. I'm not keeping this to myself, man. This is a plant that was blessed to us to share with all the people and give back, man. Do your history. Look through history how this plant has been used to help people all over the world throughout history for billions of gajillion years i don't even know if we've been around for <laughs> years but you know what i mean so we we have one more question um someone asked how do you think legalization in mexico will soon happen affect your retail business and or brand um i think i'm gonna jump on that Unc, because i'm actually in mexico been in mexico for the past year and um has been watching um how it's been unfolding and uh, Kenneth, until there is, I guess, cross-border country um, import export, I, I don't think that Mexico is going to be affecting the US um, as in the near future. Um, what we've been told is all of the licenses have actually already been given out and they will be going out specifically to in, in more of an industrial nature. So folks who have uh, businesses in, you know, tequila and airlines, it's, it's going to be going out to the wealthy. Um, I know that I've seen um, people sending me things about how, oh, 40% of licenses are going to be going to the indigenous people of Mexico. Um, I think that's great in, in, in rhetoric. Um, but who will be backing those indigenous folks if that is like, what is going like to be? Like your boy just said, they don't got no money, so what are they going to do? So, um, so I think I gotta go yes, <laughs> yeah. There's there's a lot of opportunity, um, I think, and but there is also going to be a lot of existing industries and potentially cartels who will be, you know, playing. I mean, we we have someone locally who. Um, is a delivery service and their comment is 
no, there's, there's, why would we, why would we become legal? Because we would be forced to sell cartel weed. And that's not something that we want to do. So um, I hope that answers your question, Kenneth. <laughs> we're, we're keeping so, our eye so out real, on Mexico. So real quick, being that, being that, you know, they asked me the question, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hop on it too yeah. briefly. You know what I mean? And my answer uh, is similar to yours, but it's also, you know, no problem because your habla espanol mucho bueno, mucho hambre <laughs> in Mexico. You know I mean, I speak fluent Spanish. You know what I mean? Mucho hambre en la cárcel aprendiendo yo. You know, so. Uh, but it it is, uh, you know, potential for that to happen. You know, Mexico. But you know, I'm unk, so I got to keep it real. I told you I keep it real. The same thing is happening in America. Don't think that it's not. You know what I mean? Going on out here too. It's some big companies. You know what I mean? That I feel like is owned by some mafias. You know what I mean? Big government agencies. You know what I'm saying? Stuff of that nature because they're gonna capitalize as well, regardless. Even though the Fed's talking about, you know, it's not legal. I promise you, it's some federal stuff going on because that's just the nature of America. Capitalism. They seeing some green dollars, regardless. You see Denver. You see Denver. Eight sales keep going up, talking about the money they make it in tax and stuff of that nature. So the government is not going to be missing out, and, you know, and it's keep going state by state. And what are we going to have? Like two, three states? That's not what we're going to do. We're going to be looking in like, come on now. We get this together. We got a nation this thing up. You know what I mean? We're supposed to be the United States of America. We're not really looking to unite it right now. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm going to pray for the people in Mexico. You know what I mean? And Hopefully we can figure out some way to get it right. You know what I mean? But whatever happens, I just hope it to be righteous for the people who really need it. You know, the grassroots individuals, you know, people like the delivery driver, man. You know what I mean? 